Alrighty. Well, my wife's truck has a broken shackle. So, she hasn't driven this car in a few years, but she wants to. And the last time I tried to start it up, I guess she didn't have much gas in it and we ran out. <laughs> It did all of a sudden have some random knocking to which I think is just the flex plate uh, like the torque converters maybe loose it's kind of like that kind of knock so anyways I am gonna smash some fuel in there and we're gonna see if this thing wants to drive out of here it's actually a really nice car it doesn't even smell funky it smells nice in here <laughs> fuel than what's in there. Hopefully I'll get it to the shop so we can figure out what's wrong with it. And my wife will become pumped. <laughs> so under the hood we just put in a 350. It had a, a newer Buick 350 if that makes sense in there. But uh, <coughs> It was going bad, so we just put a 350, two barrel, you know, all that jazz. I'm just trying to see if I can fill the, the bowl with some fuel just to make my life a little easier here. Or flood the motor, one of the two. Jumper cable's on there. Turns out the Merc, this battery's dead as well. So that's of no help. So that was not cool. All right, let's see what happens here. Although that car didn't seem like it struggled at all. That's noisy, eh? Definitely sounds like the torque converter. <laughs> I think we're low on fluid. This might be a two footer. It does get quieter when I'm driving. It's dirty. Come on. Not happy. She is low on fluid. Not ready. Gotta be just torque convertible. We can just squeeze her out because she needs a little bit of TLC here. Yeah, definitely. See, it's nice and quiet now, so gotta be just the 
torque bolts loose, which is nice. My wife will be happy. No chitty bang bang now. <laughs> Well, I think I'm gonna bring it up to the shop. We're gonna just charge up the battery quick. <clears throat> All right, just gonna charge that baby up. see well but it's not actually my torque bolts it's actually the flex plate which is not cool <laughs> uh, we're basically letting the oil drain out of here we are eventually gonna have to address that because now the holes are probably slotted on there I'd like to say it's not my fault but I don't know. I'm the one who put the motor in the car. So that said, I have driven it for many years. So, or the wife has. So we're going to blindly ignore it until we bring the car in to do some work later. So this is how I'm going to fix it for now, just to drive it for the next month or so, month or two. <sighs> Unless something happens before then, then we'll have to address it, but this is kind of crappy, but hey, what we got to do? The torque is, uh, sorry, the uh, flex plate's probably buggered anyways now, so I'm okay with this as a temporary dealio. 
There's not much else we can do. I mean, we gotta drop the transmission to do this fix, to fix this right. If this will quiet it down for now, I'm okay with that. And then at least we can drive it. You may be noticing what we had to do to get the oil pan to fit. <laughs> Again, a second. Not so great. These Buicks are a little weird. Well, at least these didn't fall out. Got to look at the plus side. Not that I can take them out and put some Loctite on them. We'll do the old bang, bang lock slash torque. <clears throat> eh, could have been worse. Oh, that could have happened. <laughs> uh, our wrench went straight into the oil bucket. Thank goodness it happened on the last one. <laughs> uh, it's funny. Oh, we almost did it again. <sighs> well, all right. I'm going to get the filter on there. Well, on the plus side, we do have that one's in. We're finishing up a little bit of stuff with that one. We did get our speedometer, the fan, uh, dimmer switch, so I can at least uh, kind of show you what's going on there. Come on. We got that. Yeah, a little bit of a spoiler, although this thing has been months of grief. <laughs> I wouldn't say grief, but it has been a hard one. The 59 Buick, I am trying to get it running. It is not cooperating whatsoever. I still have hopes it's going to work, but uh, yeah. Anyways, that's a teaser. This one, like I say, I am going to get the fan in it. I have uh, going to do the Speedo. We'll do a little update at the end of the video on this one because I'm pretty much, that was the last few bits on it, and then it's like ready to go out the door. Anyways, back at this one. Task at hand. I'm going to get uh, get that oil filter on, put the plug back in. Should be good other than that, and then we can uh, drop it and out the door. First run, we're gonna go to the car wash only because my washer doesn't have soap 
and it's just washing the dirt around on the car so it's moving it it's, around it's not helping it much <laughs> but in case you don't know this is my wife's car we bought it i don't know how many years ago oh like five six six maybe a while yeah so our plan is to do some rust repair on it and then when we were working on kyle's car he was going to do the bodywork on it and then i think we're going to try to paint it this winter fix it up a little bit yeah but anyways thank you so what's the history with the car what is this car so special for you so when i was a little girl my dad had a black buick lesabre with blue interior i mean, absolutely loved that car and I've always wanted one just like it. So we started looking or you started looking years ago and we found a couple of wildcats but a LeSabre and a wildcat are not the same thing. They're close but I wanted the LeSabre and then we found one in Saskatchewan yeah. I think and it's red which is fine. I love it. So yeah this car just I have good memories from my childhood and it's just really special to me to have a car like my dad used to have. It's about it. Yeah. I love it. Well, you drove the doors off and then we did your truck. <laughs> yeah. And then a shackle broke on your truck. So I'm trying to source some parts. So we haven't driven this one in a long time. So. A couple years. Yeah. So. It did have a pretty badly cracked windshield when we bought it. So we replaced that, I think, two or three years ago. I think it was before you stopped driving it. That was before I stopped driving it, yeah. But, yeah. So that's pretty much the story in the car. So I happy think to be driving it. Later we're going to uh, Later we're going to go... Uh, we'll do the walk around. I'll show you the car. When we did have it, it did have a Buick 350 in it. And we... Uh, that motor went bad it was like just overheating all the time and it wasn't worth doing anything with so nope. i had a small block we threw that in drove that for a while yep. oh it's still in here yep. and uh yeah that's where it's at folks 
there she sits in all of her glory. Uh, pretty much the plan we're doing with this one is we're going to, uh, like Esther and I, she wants to do a bunch of work. We're missing a few bits, but that's not a concern. Because I think this one's missing on the other side. But the car does have a fair bit of rot in some places and a few dents and things. So what we want to do is we're going to do the basic metal work on it. And then uh, Kyle, the fella that had that blue 54, he's going to do the body work on it. We kind of did some horse trading. So I was going to do the metal work. And then he was going to do the body work. And then possibly paint. We'll kind of see where we go. So there's going to be a few few videos coming up. We're going to be doing some of the metal work on here. Uh, basically getting it ready to hand off to Kyle to... Uh, get it ready for paint this winter because the paint is pretty hammered on this thing I could probably polish it back but the feller we bought it from he uh, yeah had some interesting touch-up jobs that he did and things so <laughs> which whatever the car's solid enough that we're gonna go through and fix her up and see where we go with it anyways uh, I think that's where we're gonna leave this one. I want to uh, thank you folks for watching and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.